Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to use a Taylor polynomial of a particular degree to estimate the solution to a given differential equation. That is, um, in this specific example, we're going to use a Taylor polynomial of degree 3 to approximate y of 1.1 uh, given this differential equation and knowing the initial condition that when x is 1, y is equal to 0. Uh, now, the reason why you'd want to do this, right, is because you can't solve the differential equation. So uh, you estimate y values given an initial condition. Uh, the other way to do this, to estimate, is to use Euler's method, which I'll dedicate another video to. Uh, but uh, let's discuss the difference before we get started between Euler's method and uh, the Taylor polynomial method. So um, consider like the sine function, which I have in red. And since this here would be pi over 2, where it has a max, a local max, um, and also a global max, but yeah. Um, since this is pi over 2, uh, let's say that this is 1. Uh, what Euler's method would do is like, you know, you have some initial condition, um, such as like this, so you know like an x and a y to start, and what you would do is like you'd use a derivative to like, take steps, like, and so in Euler's method, uh, you need a step size prescribed. So say you have a step size and you're trying to estimate like y of like, uh, let's say like y of two, right? Um, so, so what you would do is like you take uh, little steps by using uh, the slopes, which is the differential equation, right? And so move a particular step using the slope. And let's say that it's that, that little step. Um, that you take first. And then now you have an x and a y here, and you use a differential equation to course correct, because if you follow this line, you're gonna veer off to like no man's land, right? So like you course correct using um, the uh, derivative, which is the differential equation, and say like your next step will look like this. And uh, since this is pi over two, you're not too far from two, but now you have a new x and a y this place, and again, you course correct, and like this is maybe your third and final step, and you estimate the y value to x is equal to two pretty uh, accurately. And of course, the smaller your steps, the better your uh, course will be to getting to y of two. Okay, so how is uh, Taylor's method different is what we wanna now uh, investigate, right? Well, Taylor's method, instead of using little lines, does a little bit better, which is that like, um, which is that like, you know, uh, you have a Taylor polynomial uh, centered somewhere, and so you want to center it based on the initial condition. So here, like, you want to center it around one, and, um, you know, the, the higher the degree you use, the better your estimate will be. But let's say, like, you use uh, degree three. What that happens is, like, for this particular y, you're trying to estimate the y using a polynomial, a, a finite polynomial, say, degree three. So what that'll do is, like, let me actually do this in uh, blue. Um, centered here, uh, you use a third degree polynomial, which, which will not look like the sine function, but it will do a pretty good job locally, right? Like uh, cubic polynomials look something like this, right? They have three zeros. So like away from your center, like the estimation will get bad, right? Like, and this would actually for a cubic would start coming down. So like away from our, very far away from our center, it will be pretty bad, right? But locally around your center, you get a pretty good estimate of uh, the y function, right? And uh, one reason to, for me to like the Taylor uh, polynomial method is because you don't use like little lines, you use curves. So that's cool. So that's the main difference between uh, Taylor's method and um, Euler's method. But otherwise, uh, let's get started. And I don't know where my eraser is, but this is a good substitute. Uh, let's get started and actually like see how this would go in practice, right? Well, to uh, look at what it would look like in practice, Recall that a Taylor polynomial uh, of degree three or any degree would be like, a Taylor polynomial would be this infinite sum, right? It'd be like um, n is equal to zero uh, to infinity uh, fn of a over uh, n factorial times x minus a to the n, right? That's a Taylor um, series, right? 
and and so if we just want a uh, degree three then what that would be is like f zero of a um over zero factorial i guess i'll write that and then x minus a to the zero uh x minus a to the zero plus f prime of a over one factorial x minus a to the first plus f double prime of a and maybe I'll run out of room so let me write the next one here f triple prime of a over three factorial uh, x uh, minus a cubed so this is it for degree three and that's what we're asked to do here uh, this is the zeroth derivative uh, f0 of a over 0 factorial, 0 factorial is 1, so this is just f of a, and obviously x minus a to the 0 is 1. So we start with um, f of a plus, uh, we have f prime of a times x minus a over 1 factorial is just that, right? And then plus f double prime of a uh, over 2 factorial times x minus a squared plus f triple prime of a over 3 factorial x minus a to the third, right? Okay, cool. Oh, my eraser is right here. <laughs> okay, um, all right, all right, all right. And I don't need this either anymore, right? Okay, okay. Um, all right, and so here, like a is 1. Uh, what else do we need? Well, we need uh, second derivatives. We have the first derivative, and we also have the zeroth derivative evaluated at a. So this is like f of 1, right? So um, I guess I'll do it in blue again. So this is f of 1 plus f prime of 1 times x minus 1 plus f double prime of 1 over 2 factorial x minus 1 squared plus f, uh, and this was triple prime, my bad, triple prime of 1. I hope you had faith that I'd correct that, x minus 1 cubed. All right, okay, okay. And as I said, um, f of 1 is like, when x is 1, what is y? That's 0. So we have 0 plus f prime of 1 would be plugging in um, well, evaluating the derivative at x equals 1. x equals 1 is accompanied by y equals 0. And since the derivative involves both x and y, um, the uh, first derivative evaluated at 1 will mean we plug in 1 for x here and 0 for y. So that's clearly 1 squared plus uh, 0 squared, and that's 1. So f prime of 1 is 1. So we have 1 times x minus 1 so far. And then we have to write the rest. i got to write this a little lower. So 0. Um, plus we have 1 times x minus 1 and now we have a little bit of work to do like um, not in these parts these parts are clearly defined but for finding f double prime of 1 and f triple prime of 1 that's all really that we have left to do um, okay so since we have the first derivative the second derivative would be the derivative of the first derivative so I suppose I do that in red um, so uh, if we do d dx of dy dx, right? We get the second derivative. This is uh, d squared y dx squared, and so the second derivative is going to be what? It's going to be two x uh, plus two y times dy dx times dy dx, right? And we need to evaluate this at um, x equals we need to evaluate this at x equals uh, 1, ah, at x equals 1, uh, y equals 0, okay? We already evaluated dy dx, the first derivative, at x equals 1, y equals 0, and we found it to be 1. So here, like, you know, in theory, we could replace this dy dx with x squared plus y squared, but why do that? when we already know the value at 1. It's just going to be 1 here, right? So uh, we see that evaluating this at uh, x equals 1, y equals 0 amounts to writing 2 times 1 uh, plus 2 times uh, y0. Okay, good. And dy dx 
at x equals 1, y equals 0 is 1, but who cares? We're multiplying it by 0, so we get 2. So that means that f double prime of 1 is 2. Uh, so we have plus 2 over 2 factorial, so 2 over 2 times x minus 1 squared. And then plus f triple prime is uh, next, and so that's going to be uh, d dx, the derivative of um, the second derivative this time, d squared y uh, dx squared, right? Okay, cool. All right, and so to do this, uh, perhaps this time we uh, make it easier on ourselves and replace dy dx here with what it equals. So the second derivative, here, if I write it up top here, and I'll write it in red, is really, um, it's really 2x plus 2y times dy dx is uh, x squared uh, plus y squared, right? Otherwise, you'd have to do product rule here. Um, and I think it might be easier to just like work with this instead of dealing with the product rule. Um, and I don't know that we can avoid the product rule, but anyway, uh, it's okay. It's the last thing that we have to do. So uh, 2x plus um, 2yx squared plus it's going to be 2y cubed, right? Uh, let me double check. We can't get this wrong. 2x and then 2yx squared and then 2y cubed. That's right. And so this here, the, sec the third derivative, which is uh, d3y um, over dx cubed, this is going to equal, well, take the derivative of this, right? And that's going to be 2. Uh, and then plus product rule in this part. Uh, and so that's going to be 2 dy dx times x squared, and then plus 2y times 2x. And so I can change this into a 4 uh, yx. And then plus, uh, it's going to be 6y squared dy dx. Okay, now uh, we need to evaluate this at the same um, uh, point there, uh, 1, 0, right? So evaluate it at uh, 1, 0. Uh, means evaluate this at 1, 0. This means evaluate this at 1, 0, right? Ah. Right? OK. But uh, a lot of things work out nicely, so we get a 2. Uh, dy dx was 1, right? So plus 2 times 1, and then x is 1, so we get 1 squared. But here, y is 0, so this part is annihilated, right? And this has a y, too, so we get 0. So we get uh, 4. Nice. So that means that we get 4 over 3 factorial, which is 6, times x minus 1 cubed. Yeah, and... Um, 4 over 6 is the same as 2 over 3, so I prefer that. So we write 2 over 3. And now to uh, estimate y 1.1, since this is what we're claiming to be approximately y. This is approximately y, right? This is uh, y of x, approximately. All we have left to do is replace this x with 1.1. So that is... Plug in 1.1 here means plug in 1.1 here, 1.1 there, 1.1 there, and then figure out what this number is going to be roughly. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I find arithmetic pretty boring. Uh, all right, I hope you enjoyed this, and keep watching. Take care. Uh, oh, yeah, follow Jesus, or at least follow Allah.